My name is Ukwai and in the following we will explore tetrachromacy and how to achieve an almost tetrachromatic color vision as a neurotypical trichromat, thereby being able to make out noticeably more color differences in between already existing colors and also making colors appear more vivid, saturated and distinct from each other. But how can you achieve tetrachromatic vision? Well, sadly, there's no way for neurotypical trichromats to suddenly become functional tetrachromats without a currently unavailable gene therapy. However, we can get as close to tetrachromacy as possible by making use of the duality of our eyes and how our brain handles color input in its post-processing. But first of all, in order to be able to categorize and specifically talk about this near tetrachromatic color vision that arises from modified trichromacy, we need to define new terminologies. Triaptochromacy is a term that I've invented that describes a form of special color vision that's somewhere halfway between trichromacy and tetrachromacy in terms of additional color discrimination. Triaptochromacy belongs to the once again self-invented collective term adaptochromacy that includes all color visions that are adapted to have more colors and are externally modified such as by color filters. I've named this group of extra color visions adaptochromacies not only because your color vision is adapted to reveal more colors than normal but also because you yourself have to adapt to this new kind of color vision. In a way, you have to learn colors for a second time. Even I, and I've done this kind of research now for one and a half years, am either discovering new color differences in already existing colors or am learning about colors almost every day. No, we already know that color is created in context. More precisely, colors emerge from the comparison luminosity of two or more sufficiently different types of color receptor cells, which each have a peak sensitivity at a different wavelength. These color receptor cells need to be sufficiently spaced apart from each other or have a sufficient variance in luminosity. And this variance in luminosity is how we trichromats can achieve near tetrachromacy. First, we only want one of our eyes to be affected in order to have the benefits of both the normal and the new modified trichromacy. Then we need a color filter that's placed in front of our one modified, let's say right eye, that's strong enough to change the luminosity of a specific color significantly. Next, we need to decide which primary color's luminosity we want to decrease. Green is ideal in my experience, as it is one of the brightest colors and the color that's naturally most mixed with other colors. For this, we need glasses where only the right lens has a strong magenta tint, because it lowers the luminosity of green. What now happens while wearing these special single magenta lens glasses, let's call them green trioptochromacy glasses, is that in the final post-processed picture in our brain, where both visual and color inputs of our two eyes are combined into one, there's now a mismatch in the green range. However, to our brain this is no different than there being a new type of color cone that just so happens to perfectly overlap with the normal green cone and only differs in a lower luminosity. We already know that the wavelength responsiveness of color cones can overlap while still outputting color information. This is what creates a color spectrum and not just three isolated colors. So, in our green trioptochromacy case, our normal primary green cone perfectly overlaps with a new modified second green. Comparing this bell curve diagram to an actual yellow tetrachromacy one, it becomes clear that both are quite similar. If we draw a line in the lime green range, for example, we now have a tetrachromatic color cone system instead of a trichromatic one, just without a new primary color. 
There are by implication only new secondary colors added. The most new color differences can be made where the second green is horizontally sufficiently spaced apart from the primary green, but also has a high enough luminosity for it to be significant in the creation of new colors. The brighter the second green, the better it would be. But the second green only works as a new virtual color cone by it being diminished in luminosity. So while still adding new color differences, the quality of these colors is only a percentage of real tetrachromacy. This lesser luminosity causes blue and red and all the colors in between to shift closer to green, giving us the ability to make out more precise color differences in the green range. Looking at the colors that are newly created, if we take orange for example, the second green almost has no influence on it, because it's just not bright enough. However, by the time we reach yellow, its luminosity is high enough for it to influence normal yellow, lime green, turquoise and cyan. Green itself only seems brighter, but does not change in color. Like a type yellow tetrachromat, we can now make out a lot more color differences in the yellow to green and the green to cyan range. Lime green becomes as different from green as is yellow, resulting in a difference between green and yellow which is as strong as the difference between green and red. And turquoise in turn becomes as different from green as is cyan resulting in green and cyan becoming as different as green and blue. There are at least these two more secondary colors created while wearing the green trichromatic glasses. I call the new lime green, which is not the normal trichromatic lime green, grassy or grassy green, because it's more yellowish. And the new turquoise, which again is not the normal trichromatic turquoise, fancy or fancy green, as it's more bluish. These two new color names are inspired by stories of real tetrachromats. For these tetrachromats, for example, a Granny Smith apple, which is a type of yellow lime greenish color, looks like a lime green beacon against a wooden floor. And turquoise fences against green foliage appear to have the same color difference as green against yellow or red, and could never be overlooked. Hence the color names Grassy and Fancy. In addition to the new secondary colors grassy and fancy, every color in the color spectrum turns into a brighter and more vivid version of itself. Blue turns deeper, magenta brightens up a lot, red becomes almost luminescent and green transforms into a more, much more vibrant and more visible green. But why does this work? Well, if there are differences in our color input regarding our two eyes, even slight ones, our brain naturally concentrates on the signals that are the most salient, and that means the most noticeable differences. This special kind of color vision isn't as colorful as that of a real tetrachromat, but I am still able to perceive and make out a lot more color differences that I could not before. With the special glasses on, I could never mistake turquoise or lime green for pure green. Lime green and turquoise colored things, especially if they're illuminated enough, glow like a beacon to me. However, while this green trioptochromacy works instantly for me the moment I put these glasses on, I had to relearn colors to a certain extent in order to understand what new color differences I was seeing. Having said this, there is an important distinction to be made. Seeing new color differences is not the same as seeing new colors. When seeing new colors, you will literally see a new primary color and its newly created secondary colors. But when seeing new color differences, there is no new primary color added, but you can still make out more differences in the already existing colors. And these are the exact color changes that I observe while wearing green trioptochromatic glasses. In the end, colors now are a lot more interesting, distinguishable and rich in detail. 
I wear these glasses literally any time I interact with visual media. My brain now knows a more colorful world, and the old world seems almost barren of colors in comparison. Furthermore, this is only the beginning. I've already caught an app for augmented and virtual reality glasses and mobile phones that can literally give you pentachromatic vision and beyond. Sadly, the technology isn't quite there yet. It works in theory, but in general the camera quality is abysmally low. The moment there are affordable VR glasses with good enough color cameras, I can literally and figuratively change the world of color vision in its entirety. More on that in an upcoming video. So stay tuned and subscribe now to fetch new ways to experience life. I'm Ukwai and I will show you how to reshape and enhance your sensory experiences because it is nothing but our senses that connect us to this world. Thanks for watching.